Count 31, welcome to example 7. You can see we are going to solve a system of three equations. So I have three equations and three variables, right? X, Y, and Z. So I'm looking at a 3 by 3. Now when it comes to solving these equations, you can either use substitution or elimination. And on each of those options, there's many different paths that you can take. We should all wind up at the same place. We should all have an ordered triple at the end. But there are going to be so many ways of going about doing this. So it's very possible that when you go to do your homework or you look at your sample midterm or take a test, um, that you pick a path that isn't the one that I wrote out exactly. But we should all wind up at the same place. Now with this, I'm going to opt for elimination. When, when I have equations in standard form, meaning all of the variables are on one side and numbers are on the right side, or, you know, all the variables are on the left side specifically and a number is on the right side, I tend to want to use elimination. And I will give you counter examples of that on exam, um, when we get to examples eight and nine. So I'll show you when I would um, use substitution. And, and you can, again, you can use substitution here. You're more than welcome to, but I do want to go through an example where I use elimination. Now, when I opt to use elimination, I look for um, any variables that have a coefficient of one. I can see in this first equation, I have z, which has a coefficient of one. In this third equation, I have x with a coefficient of one. And in this third equation, I have y with a coefficient of negative one. So it's entirely possible. I could, I could choose to initially eliminate x, y, or z. It, it doesn't really matter which one to pick. Um, just for fun, I'm going to eliminate the y's. And again, I could just have easily eliminated x and z. So let me, let me write that here. So I will say I will eliminate the y variable. Right? I could just have easily or just as easily eliminated x or z. So really with these problems, there are just so many paths for you to take on this. Oops, it looks like you can't quite see the top of that. I apologize. There we go. Um, so many paths for you to take. So I don't want you to think that if you don't pick my exact path that it's wrong. We will all wind up, hopefully, fingers crossed, at the same, same end point. Now for me, I usually label these as equations 1, 2, and 3. All right, and what I'm looking for is pairings. When you have three objects, there are three different pairs of objects in this grand scheme of three equations. I can pair equations one and two, that makes a pair. I can pair equations one and three, or I can pair equations two and three. So I have three different pairings, and the name of the game here is choose two of those pairings, any two you want, and eliminate your y variable with them. All right, so when I look at this, I think with this being negative one, I, I, I'm gonna opt to pick, um, I'll go two and three, and I'll go one and three. All right, so those are the ones I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go one and three and two and three. I'm not gonna do one and two because that one, it's a little bit more convoluted to get rid of the Y variables. I'm gonna go one and three and two and three. All right, so if I look at, I'll do the ones that are closest to each other. So let's just take a look at two and three right now. If I wanted to eliminate the Y variable, well, this is positive, this is negative, that's great. So all I need this to do, I need this to be multiplied by two so that I would have a negative 2y. So what I'm going to do, and I, I'm just, I write these my little notes on the side. I'm going to keep equation 2, but I would like to take equation 3 and multiply it by 2. All right, so I put little notes. Okay, so keep equation 2 as is. So I want 3x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to 4. And here I want to multiply this by 2, so now I'm going to have 2x minus 2y plus 6z is equal to 10. And it's always just a good check because there's going to be so much arithmetic and so much distributing you're doing to make sure you really did multiply everything in that equation by 2. So 2 times 1, 2. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 5, 10. Great. I remember to multiply, or I should say distribute that 2 to every term in equation 3. All right, let's add these together. We're going to have... 5x, the y's are eliminated by design. Um, negative 2z plus 6z is 4z. 
and that's going to be equal to 14. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Take a look though that I am missing a y variable, which is a good thing. Now I just have two variables in my equation as opposed to one. All right, so I did the pairing of two and three. Now I'm gonna pair one and three. Let me put my pencil here. I would like, if I look at the y's, right, they have opposite signs. So I would like this coefficient to be positive three, right? Because if I had a negative three y here and a positive three y here, then they would eliminate. So I'm gonna multiply this bottom equation by negative three. So I'm gonna keep equation one as is, and I'm gonna multiply that bottom equation by negative three. So let me rewrite equation one. And I'm gonna multiply the bottom equation by negative three. So negative three x plus three y minus nine z is equal to negative 15. And before I go further, I always just, I remind myself, man, let me check this. Did I multiply every coefficient by negative three? So negative three, positive three, negative nine, negative 15, great. Because I can't tell you how many times I see students, and myself too, forget to distribute to the right side of the equal sign. Okay, let's see what we got here. So four x minus three x is x. The y's are eliminated, we've got minus eight z, and that is equal to negative six. So take a look at what I've done, right? I've taken my three by three, and you can now see I have two equations with two variables. I have reduced it to a two by two. So let's take a look at my new two by two system that I wanna solve. So really I have four, oh excuse me, not four x, five x plus four z is equal to 14 going up against x minus 8z being negative 6. So I have reduced this to a 2 by 2 system. All right, so I've gone from 3 by 3 down to 2 by 2, which is great. I'm down one variable. Things are getting simpler. Now, it's at this point, you can again make the choice, do you wanna use elimination or do you wanna use substitution? I, I'm gonna st stick with elimination because they can specifically see that these are multiples of each other, the z's, and they're already opposite in sign. All right, so I'm gonna use elimination, I'm gonna eliminate the z's. I could have also eliminated the x's, right? I could have multiplied this equation, the bottom one, by negative five, but I'm just gonna go for the more direct multiplication. So I have five x plus four z is equal to 14. That's going against x minus 8z equaling negative 6, but I want to multiply this equation by 2. All right, so let me go ahead and scooch this up just a bit so we can make sure we see all of this work. All right, so as I go through this, we have what? Um, 10x plus 8z is equal to 28, and here I'm going to have x minus 8z is equal to negative 6. All right, so I'm, I'm moving through this. All right, let's go ahead and eliminate those z's. So I will have 11x is equal to, all right, 28 minus six is 22. Ah, so I can see x is equal to two. All right, now I need an ordered triple to solve this. This is not an ordered triple. I only have one, one of my variables solved for. And once you get one of your variables solved for, you back sub. And so what I mean by that is take x equaling two and plug it into one of the two by two equations. You can't go all the way to the top yet to the three by threes. We don't have enough information. So go back the way you came. So take your x being two, either plug it into this top equation or this bottom equation and solve for z. And it, it's your call as to which one you wanna do. I'll, I'll just, since I'm looking at it, I'll pick that bottom equation and let's see how we're doing with that. So from here, I know two minus eight z is equal to negative six. All right, if I move the, the two over, I'll have negative eight z is equal to what? Negative eight. So I'm looking at z is equal to one. All right, so I got at this point, x is equal to two. That's great, and I know z is equal to one. Now I need to find my y. Now that I have two of my variables, I can plug them in, and let me scooch this down so we can see it all. Ooh, I might sneeze in a sec. I feel it coming. Hold on. Is it? This is so dramatic. No, oh, here it is. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So since I have two variables, z equaling one and x equaling two, I can now plug it into any of these equations. Pick one. I'm gonna 
opt for equation three only because the coefficients are the smallest, right? I have one, a negative one, and a positive three. Okay, so I'm gonna scooch this down. I'm gonna rewrite, I want you to keep in mind we're going with equation three. So I'm gonna have x, this is gonna say two minus y. All right, three z, well, z was one. So this is gonna be two minus y plus three equals five. And because I know x and z, I'm gonna be able to just have a y variable left over. All right, so let me scooch this down so we have some room to work with. All right, so at this point, I will say we know x minus 3y, no, not minus 3y, excuse me, minus y plus 3z equals 5. So that is telling me that 2 minus y plus 3 equals 5. If I simplify this a little, we look at negative y plus 5 is equal to 5. All right? And then it looks like I need to scooch this up just a wee bit more. Hold tight. There we go. All right. So now that I solve this, I can subtract 5 from both sides, right? And I keep on going, and I'm going to get negative y is equal to 0, which ultimately tells me y is equal to 0. So it looks like my ordered triple is 2, 0, 1. All right. And I do need an ordered triple because I had a 3 by 3. Now for me, especially when I get to the end of three by threes, I'm gonna check this on my calculator. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, well, let's take two, store it in for x, let's take zero, store it in for y, and let's take one and store it in for z. All right, and with that, I go back to my, oops, sorry, I made a giant noise or a loud noise. I'm gonna go back to my original equations, all three of them, and I'm gonna plug them in. I'm gonna see if equality holds. So here we go. Let's try the first one. Is it true that 4x minus 3y plus z, I'm gonna hope when I hit enter this is equal to nine, great. Let's try 3x plus 2y minus 2z, is that equal to four? Sweet, I got one more. And you do wanna check all three. I can't tell you how many times I made like slight errors on this and then my ordered triple will work on two of my equations and not the third one. So you wanna make sure you check all three of these equations. So is it true that x minus y plus three z is equal to five? If I get a yes out of this, sweet. Then I know I got the correct answer. All right, so you got, like I said, multiple ways of doing this. Just to give you a for instance, I did it a different way where I opted to eliminate the z variable instead of the, which one did we wind up doing? I can't even remember, we eliminated the y variable. So when I opted to eliminate the z variable, all right, if I, I paired equations one and two, and then I paired equations one and three. And when you look at equations one and two being paired, what I really wanna do is multiply this, this equation by two, because then I would eliminate the z's, and that's what I did. I multiplied equation one by two, and you see I eliminated the z's. All right, and then when I look at equations one and three, well, I wanna multiply this by negative three, which is exactly what I did. And then you see I had a two by two, but I had a two by two with x's and y's, where when we did it, we had it with x's and z's. And this one was even nicer in terms of getting reduced to a two by two, because when you reduced it to a two by two, almost everything canceled. I got y was equal to zero, I back subbed into one of these equations to get x was equal to two, and then I even back subbed further to get that z was equal to one. So I just want you to see that when it comes to doing these problems, there are multiple ways of doing these problems. There's so many paths that we can take, and your path might not exactly be my path, but we should all wind up at the same endpoint. We should all wind up, when we do this problem, no matter which path we take, we should wind up with an ordered triple of two, zero, and one. All right, so with that, we're gonna try two applied problems, which is fancy, fancy math speak for word problems. Yay! All right, I'll see you guys in a few, bye.